Hi everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Virtually Alive. Today we'll be talking about the building block of life, the cell. Every organism or living thing is made up of structures called cells. They're the smallest unit with the basic properties of life. Some tiny organisms such as bacteria and yeast consist of only one cell. Large plants and animals have many billions of cells. Human beings are made up of more than 75 billion cells. We're going to zoom into a singular animal cell, and to illustrate the different parts, we're going to make some homemade Play-Doh. The materials that are required to make our Play-Doh include 3 quarter cups of salt, 4 teaspoons of cream of tartar, 2 cups of lukewarm water, 2 tablespoons of vegetable oil, food coloring, and 2 cups of flour. To make the Play-Doh, stir together the flour, salt, and cream of tartar in a large pot. Next, add the water and oil. Cook this over medium heat, stirring constantly. Continue stirring until the dough has thickened and begins to form into a ball. Remove from heat and then place inside a bowl, gallon-sized bag, or onto wax paper. Allow this to cool slightly and then knead it until it's smooth. Now that we've made our Play-Doh, it is time for us to assemble our cell. For this activity, you will need your cooled Play-Doh, some food coloring, labels of different cell organelles, which are linked in our bio, a Petri dish, or any type of lid. You'll also need something to cut your Play-Doh. You can use a knife if you have an adult with you, or else you can just use your hands to rip it apart. Here is how to make the labels. Take a piece of masking tape and put it on a toothpick. Then you can tape your label to that part. Now that your Play-Doh is cooled and kneaded, it's time to separate it into nine different pieces. This is so that we can food color each piece to be a different color to be a different part of our cell. Start with about five drops of color and add more to brighten it. Knead the dough and use gloves or put it inside a bag so that it doesn't stain your hands. Once it's all mixed together, you're ready to build your cell. Now that we made all of our different colors of Play-Doh, it's time to assemble our cell. Follow along with the video while we tell you about each part that we're making and make sure you make your shapes just like we made ours. The first part of our cell to assemble is the cytosol. The cytosol is like the soup within which all the other cell organelles reside and where most of the cellular metabolism occurs. Though mostly water, the cytosol is full of proteins that control cell metabolism. Next, we have the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a thin but tough wall surrounding the cell. All cells are contained by a cell membrane that keeps the pieces inside. When you think about a membrane, imagine it is like a big plastic bag with some tiny holes. That bag holds all of the cell pieces and fluids inside the cell and keeps any nasty things outside of the cell. Next, we have the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center in any animal cell. It's enclosed in a double membrane and communicates with the surrounding cytosol via numerous nuclear pores. Within each nucleus is nuclear chromatin that contains the organism's genome. The chromatin is efficiently packaged within the small nuclear space. Genes within the chromatin are made of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. DNA stores genetic information. It's very similar in every cell of the body, but depending on the specific cell type, some genes may be turned on or off. That's why a liver cell is different from a muscle cell, and a muscle cell is different from a fat cell. Next, we have the Golgi. The Golgi apparatus is a membrane-bound structure with a single membrane. It gathers simple molecules and combines them to make molecules that are more complex. It then takes those big molecules, packages them in vesicles, and either stores them for later use or sends them out of the cell. It is also the organelle that builds lysosomes, which are like cell digestion machines. Next is the mitochondria. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouses of the cell. They are organelles that act like a digestive system which takes in nutrients, breaks them down, and creates energy-rich molecules for the cell. The biochemical process of the cell are known as cellular respiration. Many of the reactions involved in cellular respiration happen in the mitochondria. A vacuole is a membrane-bound sac that plays roles in intracellular digestion and the release of cellular waste products. In animal cells, vacuoles are generally small. Vacuoles tend to be large in plant cells and play several roles. Now we have lysosomes. A lysosome is basically a specialized vesicle that holds a variety of enzymes. The enzyme proteins are first created in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Those proteins are packaged in a vesicle and sent to the Golgi apparatus. 
The Golgi then does its final work to create the digestive enzymes and pinches off a small, very specific vesicle. That vesicle is a lysosome. From there, the lysosomes float in the cytoplasm until they are needed. Lysosomes are single membrane organelles. Ribosomes are what cells need to make proteins. Enzymes made of proteins are used to help speed up biological processes. Other proteins support cell functions and are found embedded in membranes. Proteins even make up most of your hair. When a cell needs to make proteins, it looks for ribosomes. Ribosomes are the protein builders or the protein synthesizers of the cell. They are like construction guys who connect one amino acid at a time and build long chains. Now that we've finished creating all of the parts of our cells and labeling them, we can show off our new cells. If you couldn't make your own cell, click the link in the description to try an online simulation of the cell. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed this week's video. Tune in next time. Bye!